Good morning, and welcome everyone to Calvary Moravian's live stream service. Thank you for joining us uh, with us this Sunday morning, and we are so glad to be able to gather together in this way. And we hope each one of you and I are doing well during this time of isolation, and know that uh, each one of you are in the prayers of everyone here uh, as we continue to navigate through these uncertain times. So some announcements to draw your attention to this morning. Uh, the joint board will be meeting tomorrow night to discuss how Calvary will continue to respond to the health concerns of COVID-19. We will assess the safety concerns of gathering together as we move through the phases our civil leadership have established for us. So look for an announcement on Calvary's plan after that. Uh, Pastor Lane and Lillianne will be on vacation beginning this Tuesday, May 18th through May 25th, and Pastor Lane will return to Calvary on May 26th. Amanda Shumpert will be on vacation starting this afternoon through May 23rd, and she'll return on Sunday, May 24th. This coming Wednesday, I will be leading the Bible study uh, this Wednesday, May 20th, starting at 6.30 on Zoom. Uh, the web address to join that study is in your digital bulletin, uh, as well as in our weekly email update that will come out. On Sunday, June 7th, uh, we will observe our annual Youth and Children's Sunday and Graduate Recognition Day. On, on this special day of worship, we will acknowledge all of those who have completed the major milestones of graduation from high school, college, or graduate school. And also know that during this difficult time, please know and feel free to contact our pastors or other staff members if you need information or if you just need to talk to someone. We do recognize that this time is challenging for each one of us, and sometimes it helps just to have someone to talk to or to listen. And know that we are available by phone or by email, and we can schedule a, a conversation with you on Zoom as well. And also a reminder that Pastor Lane will be on Facebook Live right after worship this morning for conversation and prayer. So now let us all turn our hearts and minds to our Savior. Let us worship God. Our opening hymn this morning will be hymn number 526, Church of God, Elect and Glorious, which can be found on pages four and five of your digital bulletin.
pray together the Liturgy of Grace, which can be found on page 3 of your di digital bulletin, and we'll jump to pages 6 and 7 as well. And the Liturgy for Grace can also be found in your Moravian Book of Worship on page 31. Now let us pray together. We worship you, Lord God, the High and Lofty One, who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. You dwell in the high and holy place, and also with those who are contrite and humble in spirit. Give, Give us grace to bring you the sacrifice of a broken and contrite heart, which you, O God, will not despise. the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. More, More to be desired, desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. God spoke these words, saying, You shall have no other gods besides me. You shall not make for yourself an idol. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Honor your father and mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should also love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. If you have love for one another, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, yet by no means clearing the unrepentant, incline your ear and hear, for we do not present our supplications before you on the ground of our righteousness, but on the ground of your great mercies. Let us go to God in silent confession. Create in us a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within us do not cast us away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from us. Restore to us the joy of your salvation, and sustain us as us a willing spirit. Have mercy upon us according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy. Blot out our transgressions through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Lord, have mercy upon us. Amen. Thus says the Lord, I will forgive your iniquity and remember your sin no more. Peace be with you.
in the peace of God, let us join in professing our faith. With, With the whole of Christendom, we share faith in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We believe and confess that God has revealed himself once for all in Jesus Christ, that our Lord has redeemed us through the whole of humanity by his death and resurrection, and that there is no salvation apart from him. We believe that Christ is present with us in the word and the sacrament, that he directs us through the Spirit and thus forms us into a church. We hear him summoning us to follow him and ask him to use us in his service. Christ joins us together mutually so that knowing ourselves to be members of his body, we become willing to serve each other. In this spirit, we await the appearing of Jesus Christ. Go forward to meet our Lord with joy and pray to be found ready when he comes. Amen. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us now go to God in intercession. Dear God, we know your grace is always with us and extended to each one of us. We ask now for an extra measure of your grace and your abiding peace as we continue to face this crisis. We pray for all of the families who are dealing with the added stress caused by the response to this virus. We pray for all the seniors who are missing out on graduation. And God, we pray for our city and our community as we've seen a spike in cases of those suffering from COVID-19. And God, we pray for our medical staff, doctors and nurses who continue to risk their health and their safety for the sake of ours. God, give our lead leaders wisdom and guidance to safely and slowly reopen as it, as it is possible to do so. And we pray for those who might be returning to work. May they be able to provide for their needs, but most of all, may they remain safe. And help us to be mindful of those who are at risk for our commerce to continue. May we be kind, respectful, and patient with the restrictions needed for the health of all. And may we continue to provide for those who are in need and suffering from the weight of this crisis. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time to make our common intercession to you. 
and you have promised through your beloved Son that where two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the world to come everlasting life. Amen. to God come from every part of our life, and, and in the midst of these unusual times, our offerings can come to God in so many unique ways. We also remind you that you can continue to support the ministry of Calvary Moravian by going to the online giving section of our website or by mailing in a check to our office. Our church is and has been committed to serving the needs of of our congregation and community during this time. And it's your generosity, your support, your prayers, and your actions that make that possible.
In gratitude, O God, we come into you and into your presence. And we thank you for all you have done for us, most especially for bringing us into the light of Christ. So we offer to you all who we are and all that is us and give you thanks and praise and pray that we will be bearers of of the fruit of faith, hope, and love. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Our epistle text this morning is from 1 Peter chapter 3, beginning with verse 13. Now who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is right? But even if you do suffer for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled, but in your hearts reverence Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to make a defense to anyone who calls you on account for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence, and keep your conscience clear, so that when you are abused, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing right, if that should be God's will, than for doing wrong. For Christ also died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he went and preached to the spirits in prison, who formerly did not obey, when God's patience waited in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a clear conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers subject to him. And then the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is taken from the gospel of St. John, the 14th chapter, beginning with verse 15. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father And he will give you another counselor to be with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you desolate. I will come to you. Yet a little while and the world will see me no more, but you will see me. Because I live, you will live also. In that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. He who has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, kiddos. We hope you are doing well and have had a good week. Um, Today we are going to continue talking about Jesus' friends. We started last week, we learned about uh, John, son of Zebedee, and we talked about Peter, and we talked about Judas Iscariot, and the one that replaced Judas, Matthias, and then we learned a little bit about Thomas, 
and James, the son of Zebedee, and Philip. So today, if we follow the picture, we've learned a little bit about, so Jesus is in the middle, and then we've learned a little bit about these three, and a little bit about these three. And so today, we're going to learn about the three at both far ends of the table. So we will start on this end. Here is Andrew. We already know he is Peter's brother. See, he's sitting in the picture. You can see that he's sitting close to Peter. Andrew was one of John the Baptist's disciples. But when John the Baptist showed Jesus to him, he went to get his brother Peter, and they both followed Jesus. Both Andrew and Peter were fishermen. Many centuries ago, the people of Scotland liked Andrew so much that they made him the patron saint of Scotland. If you should ever go there, you will see this his sign, the cross that looks like an X with a blue background. Next, we have James the Less. People called him the Less because he was younger and shorter than John's brother James. You getting all this? So, James the Less sign is a saw. Finally, at, th at this end of the table, oh no, sorry, yes, we come to Bartholomew. His name means son of Ptolemy. He was told about Jesus by Philip after Jesus told Philip to follow him. This is Bartholomew's sign. It's three knives. So now let's travel this way. Here we have Matthew. He was a tax collector from Capernaum until Jesus called him. Matthew followed Jesus and later wrote down his story of Jesus the Gospel of Matthew. It is the first book in the New Testament. Matthew's symbol has three money bags on it to help us remember that he was a hated tax collector before Jesus called him and Matthew found the peace of Christ. This is Jude. His name almost sounds like Judas. The next to the last book in the New Testament is a letter by Jude. His symbol is a ship sailing because he went across the sea to tell the story of Jesus. And finally, here is Simon. He was a fighter for his people and for God's law. So he was also called the Zealot. He was also a fisherman. The symbol of Simon is a fish and a book. The fish helps us remember that he was a fisherman who became someone who fished for people to show them the truth about life. The book is the book of that truth. It stands for the Bible, and especially the story of Jesus written down there. So now we hope that every time you see this very famous painting or picture, that you know just a little bit more about all the people seated around the table. I wonder what your sign would look like. If you had to choose one or two things to put on a little shield, what would they be? So over the course of this week, I would like for you to think about that. 
and I'd like for you to draw it for us. And our, at our next Zoom with Kids, we'll share them and share a little bit about why you chose what you chose to put on your shield to describe who you are. Okay? So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this time. And Lord, we thank you for friends. We thank you for friends who are like family. And we thank you for family who are like friends. Lord, we're so grateful for all the abundant gifts and love that you shower upon us daily. And may we keep those closest to us and most special to us within our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us join in a time of quiet meditation followed by prayer. Lord God, we pause in these moments with you to first offer our gratitude for sustaining all of us during this difficult time. Our faith in you has brought us such a sense of grounding and hope and security. As our sovereign Lord, we are resting in your care, knowing that even through disappointment or pain or difficulty, that you will teach us something. As with any crises in life, you work in such a way that something good always emerges, just like that little flower that will not give up peeking its head through the pavement. You are a God of resurrection hope and a God of new life. Yet we confess to you this morning, Lord, that we are tired of trying to be socially distant. We grow weary with being away from family and friends and those we love. And though we are deeply grateful for the opportunity to be together through this medium, it's not the same. Because you created us to be in relationship. So it's difficult to be separated physically. Yet we know that in order to follow your command to love one another, we have to put our neighbor first in all that we do. We pray this day for those in our congregation who are hospitalized, particularly remembering Sister Jane Softly, those who are recovering from surgeries, those undergoing therapies of various kinds. Give to each one your healing help and strength and assure them that you are indeed their advocate who is right beside them. We pray also this day for those in our community of faith who have lost income because of this crisis. We pray that you will help them, that you will show us how to share of our means, that we can help those who are struggling with unemployment and loss of income. We remember those who are in small businesses who struggle each day with what to do next. Give them guidance, direction, and hope for their future. And Lord, continue to sustain us, your church, not only Calvary, but all those who confess your name 
and seek to love and live by your commandments. Keep us close in thought, in prayer, and in spirit during this time when we are separated. And help us understand once again that the church is not a building, but it is those who are united in your Son, in faith, hope, and love. We thank you, O God, now for hearing our petitions. For we offer them in the name of him who taught us how to love and who gives us strength to love, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Around supper time each night, if you watch the evening news, there's usually a plethora of advertisements from various law firms around the triad. And you'll hear any number of phrases like, you'll know when you need us, because we have built a reputation as genuine advocates for our clients. Or another says, you can depend on us. Or yet another says, I know what you're going through because I have been there myself. The point of all these advertisements, I think, is to help potential clients know that these particular law firms will walk along beside them, help them, advocate for them, especially when they are trying to resolve injury or disability claims. I like the way that one firm says, we've built a reputation on being advocates. What is an advocate? Well, we usually think of an advocate as those who support or work or protect or maybe even speak up for those who need assistance or who may not be able to speak for themselves. We might could say that advocates are champions for the cause of another person. Well, Jesus talks a lot about an advocate in today's text from the Gospel of John. In chapter 14, we find Jesus in the upper room with his disciples. It's the night of his garden agony. It's the night that Jesus will betray him into the hands of authorities. And though the disciples are not sure what is about to happen, they must have sensed in Jesus' demeanor that something grave is about to occur because Jesus talks to them as if he were about to leave. In last week's gospel from this same chapter, Jesus tells his followers that he's going to prepare a place for them, a place where they will someday be with him. And they are troubled. And they begin to ask him where he's going. And then Jesus ends by describing himself as the way, the truth, and the life. They still seem confused about all of this, yet Jesus continues to share with them his final words. They are words that he hopes they will remember after he has left them. Critical words that he hopes they will recall as his followers. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. If you love me. You remember the pledge of one of Jesus' would-be followers in the Gospel of Luke? He says, I will follow you, Lord, wherever you go. Consider, too, the response of Peter when Jesus predicts that Peter will deny him three times before the cock crows on Good Friday morning. Oh, no, Lord. Lord, even if I must die with you, I will never deny you. And then all the rest of the disciples said the same thing. Remember, too, the insistent replies of Peter on the beach when Jesus appeared after the resurrection and asked Peter three times if he loved him. 
And Peter seems almost insulted in the passage. Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. How many times have we, like those first followers of Jesus, uttered those same words? Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Yet we all know from human experience that it is one thing to confess love and it's another to demonstrate it. I think this is what Jesus was trying to say in his final discourse. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. You won't just verbally say that you love me, but you will act on my love. You will participate in it. You will demonstrate it by what I command you. To do what we are commanded is to exercise obedience. <laughs> obedience. That's a word that we usually use only for dogs these days. It's not a word we humans particularly like, especially when we live in a world that values human independence where we like to do what we want to do when we want to do it. But obedience in this context is not acting out of the fear of a harsh parent who will punish us if we don't do what we're told. No, this obedience that Jesus calls us to is an obedience which comes from a desire to love God to trust his word and to act upon what he tells us to do. Because deep down we know that acting on his commandments will bring us life and will bring us joy. It's absolutely fascinating to me that if you follow this passage, right after Jesus asked his followers to demonstrate this love for him by following his commandments, that he promises that he will give them exactly what they need to do that. Listen carefully. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. You know him because he abides in you and he will be in you. And then listen to this. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. I will give you another advocate. Since I cannot be with you but I am going to the Father, you will have one who is literally going to come along beside you, who will journey with you, who will comfort, who will inspire, who will strengthen, who will lead, who will guide you in my absence. And that one is the advocate, the Holy Spirit. The Greek word used for advocate is paraclete. No, I didn't say parakeet. <laughs> paraclete. Because in the ancient world, this was a legal term. It was one who was called to come beside you, to walk with you, and to help you. And Jesus has been that kind of presence, hasn't he, with his disciples. He has guided, he has taught, he has reminded, he has interceded, he has comforted them. One commentator says, What they, the disciples, have known in Jesus and fear losing in Jesus' impending absence they will always know in the promise of the paraclete, the advocate who will come along beside them. This is why Jesus says, right after this, I will not leave you orphaned. I'm coming to you. You're not going to be left alone. You may feel that way at times. You may feel like an orphan does. But you can be assured that I will be right there beside you even when you may not be aware of it. You want to know how you will be able to obey my command to love? I'll be there to help you do it. 
These are words that we all need to hear right now in this time of uncertainty because these are unprecedented times. they are times like we've never witnessed in our lifetime. So much is unknown as we try to move forward, as we try to discover what life is going to be like in the future. It's particularly hard right now to know what to do to live out Jesus' command to love. What is the most loving thing to do in this crisis? As a Christian, how do I follow this command to love when I have to be socially distant, when I can't hug someone, when a smile of comfort or reassurance is hidden behind a mask? Yes, these are times when we need an advocate someone to come along beside in this time when we're on this emotional roller coaster. We feel a variety of things from loneliness to boredom to fear to anxiety to chronic restlessness to a loss of control. These are times when we long for human contact. We want to be back together. I heard someone say the other day that when they saw everybody again for the first time, they were going to hug the daylights out of them. As Christians who long for relationship, who are made for relationship, we desire to follow Jesus' command to love even in these difficult days. And we find ourselves not knowing what to do sometimes. I even found myself wondering the other day about the risk of seeing my own parents, how to care and keep social distance with them, dealing with the concern of not wanting to give two people in their 80s coronavirus. You've been there. I don't have to tell any of you anything because we're trying to navigate waters we've never sailed before. We long to connect We long to care, to be back together, to exercise Jesus' command to love. And that's exactly why we need the advocate's help right now. To discover the best ways to do just that. To follow this command to love neighbor as I love myself. Now is not the time for selfishness. Now is the time to put our own desires aside and to do what is most loving for our families, for our community, and for our brothers and sisters in Christ. I don't like this time any better than you do. I'm tired of preaching to an empty church, even though there are a few furry friends here this morning. I get weary of Zoom meetings. I'm tired of trying to figure things out virtually. We're not alone in all of that. We have an advocate, the paraclete, the Holy Spirit, the one who is coming right along beside us, and that Spirit has and will show us the way as we move forward together. Jesus made us that promise. He would send the advocate to help us know how to fulfill this commandment to love. On Monday of this past week, I was thinking a lot about next steps and how this is all going to turn out. And I was thinking to myself and praying, Lord, I I don't necessarily know how to continue to pastor in all of this. What's going to happen next? And guess what? In my scripture reading that day, I kept running across the word trust. Trust in me. Words like, I'm your shelter, I'm your fortress, I'm your God. Trust, trust, trust. Okay, Lord, I get it. Trust. And in that moment, the advocate came right along beside me in uncertainty. 
the one who helps us know the loving thing to do, the one who is working in us and in this crisis in ways we cannot yet see, saying, trust me, be still, and know that I am God. Paul also reminds us of this truth in his letter to the Romans, now we see in a mirror dimly. But then, in God's time, face to face. And with the help of the advocate, all of this will come into greater focus. And perhaps God will use this time to teach us something. To bring to our remembrance what's really important in life, what's really essential, and what's not. I think the Spirit's going to help us relearn, perhaps in a new way from this situation, what it truly means to love neighbor as we love ourselves. It might be as simple as calling an elderly or vulnerable neighbor to see if there's anything we can pick up for them at the store. It might be as simple as sending a grocery gift card to someone in a non-essential business who is losing income. It might be as simple as giving the takeout driver an extra tip. It might be as simple as sending a card to someone we know is isolated and lonely. It might be as simple as a phone call or an email or a text just to let somebody know that we're thinking about them. It might be as simple as wearing a mask when it fogs up your glasses or it feels terribly uncomfortable to protect others. It might be as simple as putting our own desires aside for the good of the common whole. Jim Wallace writes these poignant words. Our life together can be better. Ours is a shallow and selfish age, and we are in need of conversion from looking out just for ourselves to also looking out for neighbor. It's time to hear and call and heed, it's time to hear and heed a call to a different way of life, to reclaim a very old idea called the common good. Jesus issued that call and announced the kingdom of God, a new order of living in sharp contrast to all the political and religious kingdoms of the world, that better way of life was meant to benefit not only his followers, but everybody else too. Maybe God is using this crisis to teach us how to love and live together again how to truly be the church in the world guided by the advocate who will come along beside us and help us follow this great commandment. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Let us pray. O God, we thank you that when your Son, Jesus Christ, was preparing to come to you and leave this earth, that he gave us the promise of an advocate, of one who would come along beside us to comfort, to reassure, to challenge, to guide, to direct. And so come by your Holy Spirit to each one of us in this time and reassure us of your presence. Help us to know that we are guided, directed, and loved by you. For we ask these things in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen.
now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you and come along beside you forevermore. Amen.